One of these things is not like the others. Hey everybody, this is Phoenix Down, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda. In the last episode, we manhandled Manhandela and got the third piece of the Triforce of Wisdom. And then we did some exploring on the overworld and picked up the power bracelet. The function of which I will get into shortly, but first I want to go over this way. Head over to this cave here and take out a pea hat since it's going to stop conveniently in front of me. And I am going to buy some arrows. Because why not? It's right there, right next to me, and I just happen to have enough money. The way arrows work is that, you know, you equip them, you have to have the bow first, of course. You press the B button to fire, and it uses up one of your rupees. So you don't have, like, a specific stock of arrows. It's actually part of your money that's being used. So it's something to watch out for. You shouldn't use it too often because, you know, it's they're fairly valuable. Anyway, I'm going to step up this way because there's also a secret for everybody around here. And I'm going to uh, try to get some uh, bombs. Hopefully, uh, all right, good. I've gone through so many recordings that I've been trying to... I keep running out of bombs in this episode when in my pre previous attempts at recording. So thankfully, that went well for me. Yeah, the 10th enemy holds the bomb or something like that. But anyway, over here... We have a secret to everybody that I'm going to get to. Ah, nuts. Nuts! Oh, another bomb. Yeah, it figures. My luck. Ooh, fairy, fairy. All right. That's all. It's all coming up Phoenix now. Anyway, I'm going to blast a hole in this wall here. And we've discovered another Moblin hiding place. A secret to everybody, you say? We got 30 rupees. I'm assuming he just doesn't want us to, like, tell everybody where he's little hideout is so we're kind of like it's kind of like Link's black blackmailing him a bit so you, you never you never realize just how dark the hero of Hyrule can be and I just walked right into that line oh what was I thinking come on give me a heart oh well Nah, eh, well it doesn't matter but anyway the power bracelet Basically, like if you played Ocarina of Time, when you got the brace, the Goron bracelet or whatever it was called in that game, it allowed you to pick up stuff that you couldn't pick before. It kind of works the same way in this game in that there are certain blocks on the world map that you can now push to reveal hidden staircases. You step in here and there are four of these in all and they are all interconnected so it's kind of a way of a quick travel around the overworld. I'm going to take the center path. Takes me here towards the uh, beginning of the uh, game. Just this little mountain area, just a couple screens away from where you start in the very beginning. And you can live for now, Tektite. I'll get you later. I'll be back shortly. But yeah, I uh, overlooked something over here in a previous recording, a previous episode, I should say. Take out the levers. And I'm gonna blast a hole in this wall. And we got an old man that's offering us a new heart container, which I will take. We now have nine heart containers. We're doing pretty well for ourselves. More life is always good life. So I'm going to head back this way, and we're going to work our way over to level four. All right, Tektite, take that. Yeah, you didn't even drop anything. I'm disappointed in you, Tektite. Ah, well, whatever. Ooh, fairy. Not that I need it, but it's there. Let's see if I can pick up some rupees. I'd like to have at least a hundred rupees before I enter level five. And I'm not gonna be getting much money from level four. So I'm just doing a little bit of farming. Not a whole lot. I mean I got 75 now, so I'm not too worried. I want my figures. You know, when I want money, they're dropping hearts. When I want hearts, they drop other things. Anyway, and speaking of which, I don't think I ever actually entered this staircase. I, I remember burning the tree, but nope, I didn't. We got a secret to everybody. And we got 10 rupees. I guess this guy must have been hard up for cash or just didn't uh, value his secret all that much. Oh, I didn't even realize I hit that Octorok. I was aiming for the Zora. Haha, uh -huh, take that. Anyway, this weird green thing, you've probably been wondering what this thing is. It's actually a dock. You step on it, and you use the raft 
to go across the water. And this is the entrance to level four. Got kind of like a gold, kind of a coppery goldish tint to the stage this time. So let's go. Take care. Take out some keys. Ooh, four in one swing. Not bad. Boomerang's really good. All right, we got ourselves another key. We got ten keys. Yeah, we're definitely not hard up for keys, and thankfully in this game, you know, it's something that they changed in future Zelda games, but you don't have to worry about, you know, your keys working uh, in a, uh, well, the keys only work in the uh, dungeon that you get them in, like future Zeldas, but in this game, you can use them in any door or anywhere. Anyway, we have a new mechanic in the starting with level four. We got dark rooms, which we have to illuminate with the blue candle. All right, we got the candle, or candle. We got the compass here, and these huge bad enemies are called Vires. Not to be confused with the dark Adonis from a certain uh, JRPG for the PlayStation systems. Though actually, in some of the Game Boy games, the Vires are uh, a mid-boss of sorts, so I guess that kind of reference goes uh, full circle in a way. Anyway, I'm just going to ignore those guys. They're not going to drop anything for me, because with the white sword equipped, you cannot actually one-shot kill the Vires. They always split up into two red keys. But once you get the magical sword, it's kind of like with the Zoles. Like, if you attacked a Zole with the uh, wooden sword, it would split up into two gels. The Vires function the same way, only they turn into keys. They're more frustrating to deal with, especially when they circle around you and hit you from all sides like that. Take that. Stun you. Pin him up to the wall. And just do kind of like a double stab. Hit him once, have him split up, and take out both keys if a Another sword shot. Anyway, the room is dark again, so I'm going to have to light it up. Light up the night. And we got some Zoles that we can only see. If, if it weren't for their eyes, we wouldn't be able to tell exactly where they are at all. So that's that's a nice... Uh, it's good to be able to tell where, they are, where they're at. Anyway, we have 11 keys now. That's probably the most keys we're ever going to get. Ah, bubbles. I can't use my sword. And I can't cross that water either. So I guess my only option is to go this way. So I'm going to open up the door. Oh boy, we got some narrow platforming here. Or, uh, it's kind of like platforming, I guess. That's... Gotta take out the red keys. Do not bother using a key on that door up there. It's not gonna... It's not worth doing. Just take my word on that. We're gonna go over to this door that popped open from defeating the enemies, though. And encounter a new enemy, the like likes, which I do not like. Because anybody that's played the Zelda games should be familiar with those guys. They're very infamous for one particular thing, and that's trying to eat you and then stealing your shield. You know, I bought you know, I paid a good 90 rupees for my magical shield. I don't want to get eaten by some weird looking hamburger blobish shaped creature. Anyway, down here we got ourselves a little secret. We got the ladder. Well, actually, it's a step ladder. Though I guess I shouldn't uh, judge things based on uh, society's narrow views or anything like that. But anyway, with the step ladder, I come back into this room. And I can actually walk over water with it. A single tile space worth of water I can now cross over. I sh probably shouldn't have did that. Oh well. But anyway, now I can cross the water up here. And I'm just going to ignore these vires. I don't even have to light up the room. I know where I'm going. We got more vires. See, now I can just cross the little pit of water in the middle of the room. Take that. Haha. -ha. So much easier to deal with them that way. But anyway, this is the room that the key would have taken me to, so I could have worked my way around, but using the key would have gotten me nothing. I would have been stuck on that little island, and, you know, the stepladder only covers one tile's worth of space, and you can't jump. But anyway, I got the map. I'm going to use, uh, if you notice the shape of the map, it's, uh, kind of like a snake head or something like that. 
and there's this you know this blank spot here. Well, I'm going to use a bomb and blow a hole in the wall and pick up some rupees. All right, I got my 100 rupees. Now all four corners of this room can be blasted with the bomb. So I'm going to I'm going to blast this one for starters. Ah, it's Manhandela. What are you doing here? All right, let's see if I can do it right this time. Yes! All right, one shot. One bomb, four pincer things. And the old man here is telling us to walk into the waterfall. That's basically a little clue as to how to get to level five. I'll, I'll, I might demonstrate that, but I already know where it is. I might just explain it when the time comes. But anyway, I don't want to, I don't feel like using my key, so I'm going to go over this way and, uh, just blast a hole in this wall. Yeah, I'm glad I wound up with bombs this time. I didn't have them in my practice run, so I had to go the long way around. Not that it really matters that much. I got plenty of keys, and I don't really need to deal with the keys either. And we got traps. Woohoo! Yeah, luckily I knew the layout of the room already, but... But yeah, that's the... Uh, that's pretty devious. You walk into a dark room, and this thing's right in front of you. You think you can just dash straight ahead, but then you just ran face first into a block, and the traps will converge on you. So that's pretty devious on their part. Alright, fire, take that. Alright. Yeah, if I want to progress from this room, I have to uh, take out the keys. And this wall here can be bombed as well to get to the room with the with the uh, rupees. But anyway, here we have a boss battle against Glee Gleok. Dreaded two-headed dragon. How does having two heads even function? Is it like how uh, people have two sides of their brain and like the left half controls the right side and vice versa? Is like the left head controlling the right side of the body and the the right head controlling the left side, something like that. Uh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, we defeated him. That went a lot easier than my practice run. We got the heart container. And we got the Triforce. Piece number four has been collected. Only four more to go. And then we can go rescue Princess Zelda. But anyway, guys, next time on Let's Play The Legend of Zelda, we will... Do a little bit of exploring around the overworld, pick up a few extra things, make some preparations. Get out of my way, P-Hat. You're screwing up my outro. And we will basically uh, work on heading up to level 5. Ha 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 ha, take that. So this has been Phoenix Down, and I will see you guys next time.